Good evening. Welcome back to MTG Card Collector. Today we're going to be doing a different, a different style of video. A little beginner's tips. Um, I'm going to use some cards as a, a little setup. Uh, not busting open any packs. But wanted to go over a couple of things. Um, one of those things being... We, as Magic the Gathering players, are not very good at explaining to new people how the game is, where to get the cards, um, and how to play the game. Uh, what each feature of different cards does. You know, we kind of go through things real quick because we know how to play. We want them to sit. We want them to play with us. But what happens is a lot of times uh, we actually scare off people because we start talking about how much a deck might cost, how much, you know, cards in and of themselves cost individually. Therefore, the decks that are competitive or at least fun to play, because everybody likes to play the fun decks, um, can be. Um, so, with that said... I want to welcome anybody who's new to Magic the Gathering, and I want to slow it down just a little bit maybe to help some people out. Um, you don't need much to play Magic. Uh, you can go to any local game shop, also known as an LGS. You can go to Walmart, Target, uh, most of your big comic book stores, uh, re reputable comic book stores and some really nice ones, uh, and buy cards. And I would recommend... Buying a challenger, a starter deck, I would recommend buying um, two or three of them. You know, if you have a couple friends, have them buy one each. So you have, you know, two, if there's three of you or four of you, you know, you, you buy one, one starter deck a piece. Um, you don't need a lot of cards, but you need to understand how the cards work. Beep, beep. The, uh, the mechanics of the cards is in of them cards, but the, the mechanics of the gameplay is in the rule book, and the rule book sucks to read. So you have to sit down and learn how to play the game. I'm not going to go over the entire game. I tried to do this last night, and I ended up making like a 45-minute video. I just deleted it after thinking about it. That, that video was just way too long for anyone to listen to. So I'm going to break it up into different parts. Today we're going to talk about basic functions of the cards different styles of cards. That's it. The next one, the next uh, beginner tips might be um, something totally different. But so what I've done here is, as you can see, I'm playing, a, I'm playing a game. I'm on my mat. It's a match. Uh, it's the first match of three. First game of three. Uh, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Game one. I'm on turn six. I've been lucky enough to get all six, uh, six lands in play. I got a was lucky enough to get one of my uh, Planeswalkers in play. Sorry, I, I made a mistake on this. It's supposed to be up to six. And then, of course, I got my big creature out, turn five. Now it's turn six. None of that makes any lick of difference to anybody. No one cares. Because a beginning player doesn't know what to do on turn one, let alone what to do, how to read the card. None of this matters. None of it matters. None of it matters. So let's break it down. Break it down simple and easy how to read the cards. You have a lot of different types of cards. You got artifacts, which are gray bordered. You got instants. An instant, I'll go over this another day, but an instant is a fast spell. It still has all the same features as the other card. This one happens to be a green card. It's a sorcery spell. This one happens to be a blue card. It's an enchantment spell. This one has to be a, a legendary artifact. It's still silver, but it's got a nifty little top part to it. Yippee doo. Who cares? You got land. You got the black. You got the blue. You got the red. You got the green. You got the white. You got the colorless. It's still a basic land. And then you have full arts just means the art goes from top to bottom. See? Only part of the page. Full art. 
well, 90% full art. But anyways, called the full art. But if you don't know how to read a card like this one, Doom Whisperer, doesn't really matter. So let's break it down a little bit. In any deck, you're not allowed to have any more than four of the same card. And I mean by name. Doom Whisperer. Doom Whisperer is specific to this card. There's allowed to be four of them in the deck. That's it. No more. The price of the card. How much does it cost? In case, in this case, three of anything, two black. I had these in play already. I messed them up. I'm missing my green. Three of anything. I'm going to use green. And two specific black. You have to use black. Look, black symbol. Two black symbols. Three of anything. If I had these three in play, I could have used these three. If I had those in play, I could have used those. It doesn't matter what those three are. As long as I used three and two black, I can cast the card. Example like this one. Doesn't cost anything. It's zero. Zero. I don't know if you can read that through the plastic, but zero. Doesn't matter what the spell is. Seven and three blue. Yes, this one's expensive, but anyways. Seven and three blue. You have to be able to cast it, which means you have to have the land in play, which means if you're doing it right and you're learning, you know, you're, you'll have the land there. What type of spell is it? A creature. It's a type. A creature. It can be a legendary creature. It can be a regular creature. It can be an instant. It can be a sorcery. It can be an enchantment. It can be a land. It can be a basic land. There's like three different types of uh, enchantments. Auras and world and... Anyways, there's even old, old ones like interrupt. Those are the type of card. Okay. Now, the type... Also, when it comes to a creature, it gives you subs, a sub name. For instance, in this case, it's a nightmare and a demon. Which means if you have a spell that says, all demons get plus one, plus one, that means this demon gets a plus one, plus one. If it says, all nightmares get negative two, negative two, this demon gets a negative two. Sorry, this nightmare demon gets a negative two, negative two. These are subtypes. Okay. You have your set symbol. The set symbol represents where it came from. In this case, it was Guilds of Ravnica. Guilds of Ravnica. And because of the color, it's red. It means it's a mythic rare. Rare, uncommon, common. And honestly, just because it's a rare card does not mean it's good. Just because it's an un uncommon card does not mean it's good or bad. And just because it's a common card doesn't mean it's a bad card. I'll give you a good example. Myth, a mox Amber cost is zero. It's a mythic rare. It's a mox. Um, I've successfully had this card in two decks. Yeah, that's about it. That, that this card sucks. It sucks. It's good. It sucks. It's bad. It you know it it's, it it is what it is. It, it's very specific. Very niche. Very niche part of the game so this is not the greatest card in the world but what do you expect now you have a text box big huge text box it tells you about the abilities this one has flying and trample and if you pay two life you get to surveil too that really none of that matters the abilities the flying the trample and the ability of surveilling two it costs you two life the abilities is what makes the card good, bad, or indifferent. This could be a five cost with nothing rare at seven, seven. It, it would still be good because it's for five, you get a seven, seven. Now, what if it said five and it's only a three, three and it has no abilities? This card doesn't matter if it's a mythic, a rare, an uncommon. It would most likely be common. No one would care. It's a three, three that costs you five. Most people would not play it. I might just because I, I play every type of card. I don't care. So the type, or I'm sorry, the ability, some of them are static ability. Some of them are what we call mechanics for the set. Some sets like uh, 
guilds of Ravnica have this ability of surveil and it might not be seen again until next or I'm sorry, until next year, until two years down the road. You might never see Surveil again. Everyone's happy with it. Everyone likes it. But maybe it just is so powerful that they're not going to use it again for another two years. So in this case, Flying and Trample are what we call universal abilities. And then Surveil is called a uh, mechanic, a set mechanic. Um, but remember, the bigger thing to remember on this one is you're only allowed to have four of any one type of card in your deck. you got to understand how much it costs to play. And then you got to know that the, hopefully you can understand the name and, and be able to use it because there are cards that are decks out there, what we call uh, tribal decks that are like strictly for demons or strictly for merfolk or strictly for um, Gorgons, you know, and, and then of course the power and toughness down here. Um, creatures, every creature will have a power and toughness. Planeswalkers, Planeswalkers are not creatures. They have a loyalty counter. This one starts off with four. It means it, it even though it costs you four to bring into play. Boy, this is a tough one. Let's see if I can make it. I didn't realize it was going to be this hard to look see through there. Okay, so I'm allowed to have four Varaskas in my deck. I'm sorry, Golgari Queens. I can have eight Varaskas, but only four of them are allowed to be the Volraska Golgari Queen. Um, two, one in one black and one green. That's the cost of it. The set symbol. It's a legendary planeswalker. Legendary, the legendary rule is very simple to understand. You can have four of them in your library. You can have four of them in your graveyard, but you're only allowed to have one in play at any time. If you cast another Varaska, the first Varaska goes away. It's that simple. But anyways, whereas a creature has power and toughness, the first number is power, second, power, second number is toughness, a Planeswalker is loyalty is four. Think of it as a mini-me. It's a little person. It's a little magical conjuring Planeswalker that is helping you out. So you got a little mini you and it's loyalty is only four, but if you do the first ability, it normally will go up. I say normally the second ability will normally go down and the third normal third ability, which is also known as the ultimate ability will go down. So you have to make the abilities. You have to make the, the loyalty go up quite a few before you can do the ultimate. If you see that it starts off as a four. It's going to take you at least three turns to get it past nine in order to use it. So, like I was saying, name, cost, set symbol, type. In this case, it's a legendary planes walker. And then, of course, it's power and toughness. This is the text box for, I'm not going to go through it, but this is the text box for a planes walker. Normally, it's three abilities, sometimes four, but normally three. On a creature, it gives you the in the text box, you have your abilities, and sometimes you have what they call a, uh, a mechanic, a set mechanic. So, real quickly, enchantments, enchantments stay on the board permanently. They are what we call a permanent. An enchantment stays on the board by itself. An enchant creature goes onto a creature, also known as an aura. Think about it like it just you just gave it an extra ability. It's his aura. A sorcery can only be played on your turn. Sorcery. If it's not your turn, you cannot play it. Um, think about it like this. You're brewing it. It takes a while for that brew to come to fruition, but you can only do it on your time, and it takes a while for that brew to go through, and you can't do it on someone else's turn because it's their turn. Okay? It's a... It's slow. An instant. Da -da -da. Instant. Can go faster. It can go at any time. Anytime your turn, their turn. As long as you have priority, which means that you're able to play the card, um, then you can cast an instant. Good example of that is the your opponent just cast a creature. You have priority at this point. If you're going to let it resolve, you have priority. You can... 
cast an instant on it. And that instant might be for uh, give you an ability or kill their creature or make your creatures all stronger. You know, it's an instant. doesn't really matter what it does. And then you have an artifact. In this case, yeah, Crucible of Worlds. Artifacts are kind of like enchantments. Sorry, wrong card. Kind of like enchantments where they stay on the board. They're always there until something goes away. Sometimes that artifact is a creature. Sometimes that artifact is a um, has an ability. In this, in this case, it is uh, you may play lands from your graveyard. Which, honestly, it could have been a simple enchantment that says you play lands cards from your graveyard. Pure and simple. It just gives it the ability to be an artifact. Uh... I already went over lands. That looks like everything I wanted to go over today. So we're going to end with this once again. The name. You're allowed to have four of any one card in your in your deck. Except for basic lands. You can have multiples of basic lands. Understand how much it costs. Specific and then uh, non-specific. What type of card it is. It might be a creature card. might be an instant. might be a sorcery. Set symbol which really doesn't come into play except you want to make sure you're in the, if you're playing standard you're in the right um sets because there's like six sets so you're allowed to five sets six sets that you're allowed to uh five sets no six sets that you're allowed to uh play out of flying the trample i'm sorry uh in the text box you have their abilities this is the text box you have their abilities what the card does and then of course creatures will have power and toughness your power hits their toughness. Their power hits your toughness. And then on Planeswalker cards, you have loyalty. Loyalty, think about it. They don't hit because they're not a creature, but they can get hit uh, for four damage, and then he goes away. Unless you up it plus two, goes to six. Now it takes a big boy like this guy to destroy it. Well, I messed my little piece of paper. If you liked my video, please hit the subscribe button and the like hit it. No, no, no. Looks like that. Maybe two of them. Um, leave a comment down below. And if you subscribe, you I hit the bell button so that you get notified when I download another video. Um, the next video that I do will probably be uh, opening up some packs. Or maybe I'll do a number two beginner tips on uh turn one how to play or turn just on how the turns go what the steps and processes are uh, but if you have any questions leave a comment thank you for watching have a great day